given that f of x has a Fourier series, we have found formulas for its coefficients. But how does this work in an explicit example? Are they hard to calculate by hand? Let us see in this example. So we have a function f of x. So we take minus x between minus 2 and 0. We take x between 0 and 2, like this. And then we just repeat periodically. So it looks a bit like this, and, and so on and so forth. So we have a periodic function. Let us try to calculate its coefficients. And let's see how it looks. So there we go. So we assume uh, f has a Fourier series, a0 over 2, and the sum over cosines and the sum over sines. And we start with computing a0. a0 equals 1 over l, integrate from minus l to l, fx times 1 dx. So there we go. We have to split this up into two parts because f equals minus x on the first part and x on the second part. So we integrate minus x if we are between minus 2 and 0, and we integrate plus x if we are between 0 and 2. Then we compute the antiderivative. We get a minus x squared over 2 times 1 half gives us a minus x squared over 4. And then between the boundaries 0 and a minus 1, so with the additional minus from the lower boundary, we get a plus 1. The other one gives us x squared over 2 times 1 half, so x squared over 4. Between the boundaries, we get a 1 minus 0. So we got 1 plus 1 equals 2. So there we have a 0. Now we only need the a n and the b n. But fortunately, we can compute them all the a n in one go, and we can compute all the b n in one go. So the a n, how do we compute them? So we get again the 1 half. And again, we have to split up the integral, of course, minus 2 to 0 with the minus 6, and now with cosines instead of a 1, and from 0 to 2 with the x, and again with the cosines. Now we can rewrite the first integral because it's actually equal to the second one by making the substitution uh, u equals minus x. So then u runs from minus 2 instead uh, from 2 instead of minus 2, so from 2 to 0. And then minus x becomes a u, the uh, x becomes a minus u, and the dx becomes a d minus u. Well, the cosine of minus something equals the cosine, so the minus sign inside the cosine disappears. The d minus u becomes a minus du, so it gives a minus sign, which we use to flip the boundaries. So we get the integral from 0 to 2, uh, uh, u cosine and pi u over uh, 2 du which is exactly the same as the second integral over here. So actually the a n are twice the second integral. Well, this twice nicely cancels out with a half, so the a n is given over here. So far, so good. So we still have to compute this integral, but the expression is now a bit more compact. So how, we, how do we compute this integral? Of course, integration by parts because we have an x times a cosine, so that becomes nice if you use integration by parts. So we integrate the cosine, which is, gives us a sine times some rubbish, and we leave the x as is between the boundaries, minus the 2 over n pi times the sine which we had, times the derivative of the x times a 1 times this second integral. Now these first terms, there we get a sine n pi, which is 0, sine of a multiple of pi is 0, minus the sine of 0, which is also 0. So these terms are both 0. And we are only left with the integral over here. If we get integrate the sine, we get minus the cosine times the 2 over n pi, which gives us 4 over n squared pi squared, together with the 2 over n pi and the minus sine times this cosine over here. And we plug in the boundaries, we get the 4 over n squared pi squared, upper boundary minus lower boundary. So what do we observe? If n is even, the cosine of n pi is 1, and we get 1 minus 1 equals 0. And if n is odd, we get a cosine pi or cosine 3 pi or cosine 5 pi. It's always minus 1. We get a minus 1 minus 1 equals minus 2. And we get a minus 8 over n squared pi squared. So uh, now we have the an onto the bn. Same trick, the 1 half integrates from minus 2 to 0. Here we have a minus x times a sine and plus x times a sine. And again, we can use the substitution rule. 
So the first integral over here, setting u equals minus x, u runs from 2 to 0 then, the minus x becomes a u, sine becomes a minus n pi u over uh, 2, and we get a d minus u. But now uh, we are left with uh, two minus signs over here and over here. The sine of minus something equals minus the sine compensates the minus over here. So if we invert the order of integration, we get the uh, first integral equals minus the second integral. So uh, then we are left with an integral minus the same integral equals zero. So that's nice. The bn are all zero. So in summary, we had our a0, 2. Here we had our a n, which were slightly awkward, and all our b n's are 0. So then we can write our f of x. f of x equals a0 over 2, so o1, plus awkward terms times the cosine. Uh, so this is OK as, as final answer. Often it's rewritten a bit uh, using the fact that only the odd terms contribute. So what you can also do is say, OK, I only sum over the odd terms like this and then the cosine n pi minus 1 becomes a minus 2 so we get a minus 8 over there or what you can also do is say okay i rename n equals 2 n minus 1 then if uh, m uh, uh, runs from uh, 1 2 3 uh, and, and so on n runs from 1 3 5 and so on so then you can use as summation index m instead of n uh, uh, and you replace the n by 2m minus 1, so you get 2m minus 1 squared, and here are 2m minus 1. So, uh, and then your m runs from 1 up to infinity. So that's also an option. So this is also a valid final answer. You can use all three of them, whichever you like. And then let's see what happens if you try to plot this. Of course, I cannot go up to infinity when plotting. So first I made a plot where I went uh, up to 2. So I had uh, the function where I just did it, uh, m equals 1 and 2. And then we already get the following plot. So the green is the original function, and the red is the approximation, which with only the 1 and then 2 terms. And you see it already approximates the original function pretty well. And then if we make the number of terms we include a bit larger, say 4 terms, then we already cannot distinguish the green and the red here yeah, yeah, slightly, uh, here you see slight difference. Uh, so you see that we only need a very small amount of terms in our Fourier series to approximate our function really well, which is in this case, by the way, due to the 1 over n squared, which falls off really, really fast. So here we see that if our function has a Fourier series, then we now see how to compute its coefficients and we see that in this example, we only need a very small amount of terms to represent our original function really, really well.